Thank you. Good afternoon, Vice Chairman Lind Lindstrom and members of the Revenue Committee. My name is Luann Lenihan, L-O-U, capital A-N-N, -N, capital L-I-N-E-H-A-N. And I represent District 39, which is Elkhorn Valley and Waterloo. First, today I want to thank the educators, both in public and private schools, for keeping our schools, students, excuse me, for keeping our students in school. We are far more fortunate in Nebraska than many states across the country with the number of children that our schools have managed to keep going to school. I'm going to set aside the reasons this legislation is important to our future. There are many proponents who will follow me who will address why we need to pass LB364. What I'm going to do is actually walk through the bill and tell you what it does and what it does not do. If you start at line 28, page 2, this is a grant in aid to a child to pay part or all tuition and fees for a qualified school. So who qualifies to receive an opportunity scholarship? Only a child whose family qualifies for free or reduced lunch. In addition, the child has to be receiving the scholarship for the first time, which means they would be entering kindergarten or the ninth grade, or they're transferring from a public school, or once the program is started, has previously received a scholarship from this program, or is a sibling of a child receiving a scholarship under this program. In other words, and this has been a concern, children who are currently in private school will not qualify for this program. What schools will qualify? Elementary or secondary schools. No school that is operated for a profit will qualify. The school has to comply with the anti-discrimination provisions of 42 USC. It has to comply with the health and life safety laws and codes of Nebraska. It has to fulfill the applicable accreditation and approval requirements established by the Nebraska State Board of Education. Who's the scholarship organization that would grant these scholarships? They must, to qualify, offer scholarships to more than one qualified school. So for instance, and I like Creighton Prep, but Creighton Prep could not have a program in Omaha for just Creighton Prep students. It has to be multiple schools. It can also, as I said previously, but it's worth repeating, it can only give scholarships to students whose family income does not exceed 185% of the federal poverty level or who are in foster care or out of home care. And I think I gave the pages a list of what that, what the federal poverty level is. So, these are not wealthy students. These are not even middle class students. These are low income students. The average scholarship granted cannot exceed 75% of the statewide general operating expenditures per formula student. So whatever the state average is for what we spend in public school, this average scholarship cannot exceed 75% of that amount. What credit is provided to the taxpayer? The credit provided to a taxpayer cannot exceed 50% of the taxpayer's income taxes due. For example, if Jim Smith owes $4,000 in state income taxes, his credit cannot exceed $2,000. So regardless of what you give, you still have to pay 50% of your income taxes. The contribution cannot be claimed as a charitable contribution under the Internal Revenue Code. So if you take advantage of this tax credit, you cannot then also deduct it from your income taxes. So no double duty. The taxpayer cannot designate all or any part of the contribution for the benefit of any student identified by the taxpayer. So grandma, grandpa cannot give money to a scholarship and say they want it to go to their grandchildren. They can't even say they want it to go to a, any specific child who may need an income tax credit. Finally, and this is very important, nothing 
and LB364 reduces funding for Nebraska's public schools. Nothing. A robust private school system is advantageous to our public school system. 10% of Nebraska school-aged children attend private schools. In two counties in which their county seats continue to thrive, Columbus and Norfolk, 25% of their school-aged children attend private schools. 25%. I do think we could all agree that an influx of 35,000 students, that's the 10% who are now in private schools, into public schools would cost local taxpayers and the state hundreds of millions of dollars. My approximation is about half a billion dollars. It is in Nebraska's and our children's interest to have a thriving private schools. So thank you. With that, I'll take questions. Thank you, Senator. Any questions from the committee? Seeing none, thank, thank you. you.